Шока, 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 шока. Did you want to do it? Yes, this video is sponsored by AG1 from Athletic Greens. I'm super excited. Good morning, guys. Wee. Did you want to check out the new shed over here? Anna's going to come with. They brought in a bunch of fill here yesterday. They're building us a little road around the shed. Before we get started on that in a couple of weeks, this is a bunch of random fill. This is obviously not gravel, but this is going to go underneath just to swale it off nicely because we did have to raise this shed up quite a bit. Huh, cool. I better get to work. We had a good heavy dust settler at about 3 a.m. So I'm not sure if the soil, eh, it's going to be dry enough. Now that the tractor is warming up, I'm going to get my breakfast ready to go on the go here. Just one scoop of AG1 into my shaker cup and top it off with some water. It's a busy time of the year and we're on the go all the time. So I still, I try to focus on getting some decent food in me, even, even though I'm not home in the kitchen to make anything. This stuff is way more than a greens powder. It's actually loaded full of vitamins and minerals and the stuff that I need to recover from my workouts and, and work long hours in the fall here. We got our first 40 acres of corn out last night. We're gonna be going back to that later today as soon as I get this fertilizer rig empty. AG1 also supports my immune system, my nervous system, gives me more energy, more mental clarity. It's got some anti-aging stuff in it too, so I assume some of these gray hairs that you guys can't see might go away because you haven't noticed those, right? If you guys are interested in some for yourself, all you've got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash millennial farmer and right now they are offering my community, our community here, the millennial farmer community, a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 and K2 and five free travel plaques with your first purchase. While I've got the fan warming up here, I'm going to walk back and flip the triggers on the electric motors to just make sure product is still flowing through everything and the meters are all charged and this should be the last time I'm working with this machine this year look at that I love this contraption apparently the product didn't settle in and pack tight into the meter rolls and the lids all got on correctly and we're good to rip here strip chill and fertilizer in is so easy this right here is the reason why this field was chosen to be strip tilled because you can see how light the soil is here compared to the stuff we normally farm. You can see the hills here which end up with actually a fair amount of erosion between them so we're trying to cut down on the erosion by reducing tillage and just be more, uh, place our nutrients below the soil where they're going to stay there hopefully. This field also has a lot of those, the big buried rocks that I should come and dig out this fall. If the ground is not frozen solid by the time we're done harvesting, that would be a, a good option for some after harvest work to do. It's a big pig to turn around. It takes a lot of end row. There's my final acres done. I guess unfortunately, but in a planned way, I have a little uh, fertilizer left. There's not a ton left there. It goes quick at the bottom, but I'm gonna have to go get rid of it somewhere. So we'll pick some acres nearby that's on soil that we own. That was soybeans this year, will be corn next year. Again, I like the looks of the rows. You know, it's a little, little wiggly because I was uh, manually steering here on the ends, but I like the job it's doing in the dry dirt. I, li I, I like it. Now we will see if, uh, we can come back this spring hopefully and plant directly into these lines and right over the top of the fertilizer bands. I love the theory. As long as I'm driving right by the yard, I was having a little bit of trouble with row three yesterday telling me it was applying light. I'm pretty sure it's the sensor, but just to make sure I'm gonna flop rows three and four and then when I go out and finish this off, I'm guessing it's going to show that row four is applying a little light. That air system is really quiet. Really quiet. And yeah. Then, I think it was quieter last night when I was going to a closer bin because it didn't have to blow to the fire, so it kept the pressure down. Sure. And 
it's just like a more tolerant, to, like you can tolerate the tone of it more. It's not so high pitched. Tone, yeah. So these are the sensors right here. This is row three. And it's actually, it's like a stethoscope. It actually picks up the sound of the material flowing through there. And this one just, it says it's light. So I'm gonna put this one here and put this one here. And uh, we're gonna find out what the deal is. If it doesn't change anything, then there's actually some sort of a blockage or a kink or something in the meter roll. And row three is actually applying about 10% light. It should be simple other than I'm gonna get dirty and that's a pretty yucky thing for a millennial like me. All right, I flopped the sensors and then I rewired them to where they should be so they'll read correctly, but now I'm guessing row four is gonna show that it's applying light. And I'm gonna go get this disgusting fertilizer dust off my hands. Oh, ew. <laughs> Millennials have never liked to get dirty. Back to work, kind of. It's, it's not a lot of physical labor sitting in a tractor cab. It is the visual part that everybody sees and they think we work, you know, one month in the spring and one month in the fall, but I'm telling you the rest of the stuff, the management stuff, well, you guys have seen my videos, you know, the boring videos are the ones where I'm stuck in the tractor. Later, dogs. As soon as I'm done with this, We'll be taking out the grain cart and combine there and knocking out some corn acres. I don't know if I'll be in the combine or in a truck or what. We'll see. Uh-oh. We are going to have a legit traffic jam here. Or maybe he stopped. He stopped before the intersection, right where I'm turning into the field. So that worked out well. Thank you, sir. Well, row three not telling me anything but what I am learning is that everything's all messed up now so this totally inconsistent flow from one side to the other like it's all screwed up so that's cool once again <sighs> strip till and I'll be honest the screens on the tractor are like they're not right when I'm trying to change my fan pressure here, so I'm shutting everything down and totally rebooting the system. Cause it's just, everything's out of whack. This machine, if you've watched the last couple of years, you know why this machine is on such a short fuse with me. So any little thing just sets me off with this thing. I, I just, deep breath. Okay, we've unplugged it. Plug it back in. Something's going on back there. What is the deal? If I just turn the fan on, click the fan in, there are rows out there that start flowing. They should not do that because the implement switch is up. So it should be telling it not to do that. So more than likely, my monitors were correct. Something has happened. Why would that be? You can see the product laying over there from rows, what's that, 11 and 12? So that's gonna be this bank of hoses over here. Is it one product or both? It is both, so we're flowing both products. Seems like that should be an easy thing to diagnose, so let me think about it here. Well, how would it get both products without the meter rolls turning, it's sending both products? It worked when I pulled out of the last field. I've changed nothing. I'm gonna turn the fan on and watch it and see what I can see what I can see see see. There's product flowing out. And the meters are not turning. What on earth? Without the meters even turning. I'm gonna call ready. Let's try it here. I'm out here, so I'll just flip the switch to give flow to the fan. And we'll see. So they're both sitting there running. I would say it looks to me like it's the rate that I should be applying. And it's, yeah, it's definitely both products. Oh yeah, that's a that's a pretty good rate coming out of there. So switch the, switch the disconnects, I suppose, so that flows to the door, pull the bottom gates open, then turn the fan on and see what's happening. But why? 
the weirdest thing is the fact that it's both products. Everything is flowing to every row normally, but those those end. Oh no! Then now they turned off. I'll turn the back meter. Now they're not leaking. Everything's coming out of every row and looks normal, and everything is fine. That is that is really strange. Why it was if something was hung up in there. Um, that that well, I've had potash hang up on me, but it's always been I've always been able to spin it over or pull the plate or pull a clean out or something to get it to quit acting up and it seems like it's working for whatever odd reason so I bumped my rates up and the mass flow number is actually like it hasn't changed my left bank on those sensors is always applying low and right now they're all green but it shows that it's 14% low and the middle one's 11% high so I'm about the same distance across the field as I was last time when this started happening. So now the middle, middle's going up and up and up, and the wings are going down. So the middle is at 22% heavy, and the wings are low. And they're now, yep, now the one wing is 22% low, and the middle's 25. So it's going to do, I bet if I stop, there we go. Now I'm getting alarms all over the screen. So if I stop, so every other row is off. And rows 11 and 12 are sitting and turning and they're they're putting product on the ground and they're not Like they're not stopping and there's nothing piled up under any of the other rows So this is exactly what happened before I was hoping you'd have an easy answer, but since you don't and I've only got about eight acres of fertilizer left I'm gonna trick the implement switch and I'm just gonna drive around and spread it on top and get it out of the tank Because we got a combine corn. No it well it will allow me to apply in the ground, but it's so inconsistent. I guess I'd feel better. I don't know, maybe it would do, it, I suppose, I don't know if it would do the same thing if I raised it up. I just don't trust the, you know, I don't want to apply half the machine 30% low and half of it, yeah, and half of it 30% high. Well, I know I know what you mean about looking at the sensors, but, but something's obviously going on when rows 11 and 12 don't quit. And then we got them to quit and then they did it again. And I, you know, I've been, I check every two or three rounds cause I've never trusted this machine. So for the last two, three days, I've checked every couple of rounds to, I get out and spin over the electric motors to make sure everything's flowing. And they always flow and stop up until right now. So I don't, I don't, I don't believe the sensors are lying to me. I think something weird is going on in the bottom of the tank, in the bottom of the cart. That, that might be, take, take my rate back down to where it was and see if it does it again. Hi, uh, you're, you're not gonna believe this, but I can't get anything done now because I'm having problem after problem. And even Red E doesn't know what's going on now. So I've slowed way down and cut my rate to see if I can get it to flow because now it's just bouncing out. Like some rows are super heavy, some are super light. When I stop, there's two rows that keep going, even though the meters aren't turning. Like it's all out of whack now. Yeah. All I did was switch that sensor, so that cannot, there's no way that could possibly affect what's happening now. So I increased rate when I got here, but now I knocked the rate down again, and I'm gonna drive really slow and see if that'll work. But no, I've, I've made one round and the fertilizer's super inconsistent since I left there. I, I don't know, Jesse doesn't know. Dad's gonna take the combine now since I'm obviously running late. He's gonna take that and go get started and I'm gonna sit out here and limp along until this fertilizer's empty. So, I definitely mean it this time. This cart will not be on our fields next year. I have no problem with the 2510 with the tiller itself, what you can see in the camera there, but the cart that holds and meters the fertilizer, I would like to sell or trade. I don't know if there's another cart that would hook to this strip tiller that I could trade it for or if I could get tanks to put on this tiller or sell and trade the entire thing for something different. I'm not sure, but I'm done fighting with the cart. Somebody else can fight with it. It's got good stuff on it and I've never had an issue with it. So anybody that's interested, just know it's solid. It's good to go. You see that? You see that? I'm running out of product. That's a good thing. There goes Jim. Heading out to get some real tillage done. So I should be done here probably by the time I get to the other end of the field because both products are right down, right down in there. I'm out of here. Luckily cutting the rate back and slowing down made the product feed out 
and uh, we got those last few acres in. I'm gonna go home, pull the meter rolls out of this, just so that they don't bind up with anything, make sure everything's dumped out, because that fertilizer is super corrosive. I'm gonna dump those meter rolls later today, because uh, right now I'm gonna go check See what kind of job Jim's Ripper's doing, because they don't have any corn yet for me to have to take care of that. I do hear something, they, he must have a dryer running. Trip tiller, we'll probably see you next year. Air cart, I have nothing to say to you. Yeah, he's got the dryer and the air system running. You can hear it definitely makes some noise, but not any more than the dryer itself. It's considerably quieter than what we had on there before. Check the screen here just so I've got a feel for where he's at, so we're not running heat on the on the bottom. That should be on the bottom. Yeah. So we're heating with the top as the corn falls, and we start cooling with the bottom and recycling, recapturing that. that and everything looks good. Back in the grain bin that we're going into. Well, that yeah, looks yeah, like a decent enough job. I think we might yeah, actually take, now that we're done with the strip tiller, put the uh, chisel plow on the other tractor so we can have two tillage things running. Looks fantastic. I think it's doing a great job. It's amazing what a guy can get done when you're not fighting with fertilizer tanks. Did I sure wish you had thumbs so you could do this for me. Oh, I guess I, I ask for it every year. This is not a fun job. Oh, I missed. Oh, oh, oh yuck. Huh. Oh, ish. God, dang. I really should have factored wind direction into my decision here. <laughs> It stings the nostrils. I got the meters pulled out and the gates open, then I went into the uh, deep sink and washed my arms and face and got that dust off me. Ah, but before we get to this, the dryer has shut itself down. It was an overheating fault on the upper plenum that we had burning. Um, I know how to adjust it. There's Alan back with another truck. Meanwhile, I'm gonna climb up the ladder here and adjust that burner. It's happening because it's so warm out here today. I mean, it's gotta be 65, 70 degrees out here, which is very unusual for running our dryer this time of year. So I just gotta pull it out so it can cool that plenum down a little. Our corn is pretty dry and our temperature's warm, so I'm trying to run this plenum at only 160 degrees, which is pretty cool. And the way it's set right now, it can't get down to that cool, so. I have to adjust it. I just dropped my wrench all the way down to the bottom of the dryer. I'll be back. Got it. And now we refire. Load. Fan one. And two, uh, heat two. The screen is really handy with this screen now. I just turned the air system on too so I can see the PSI and the amps going up. I can't actually hear it because it's quiet. The old one I could hear, but this one, I turn the unload on, air system kicks right in. See my PSI's there, so I'm gonna increase my meter rolls. It's not handier than going back and forth with the old box on the dryer, and now I can see exactly how much pressure's on that air system. These are my numbers I'm watching here. I know a little bit about it, but probably not enough. I know there's a certain amperage I don't want to go over. I know if I get too high, I gotta start watching the pipes. I've actually got the local souk up dealer coming out also to connect my phone so I can control it from my phone. I'm gonna just walk back here and make sure all the pipes look okay. What do you guys think we should put here for a bin next year? We're gonna have to replace this area with some storage where we lost this in the storm. Get these, these uh, diesel tanks out of here. We're talking about doing a big one with a side draw. Well, this pipe here is what's taking it now. Everything looks pretty smooth. That's a play on words shirt, huh? Yeah, yeah. I like that, yeah. Everybody thinks it says something different. <laughs> 
Jeff from DHS Grain is up on top of our dryer right now. He's going to get it to flow a little bit faster. We've been messing around for almost an hour here, but the issue we're running into is we're pushing corn through it so fast that we're not keeping it loaded enough. And it's running out of corn. It's drying it faster than it can take it. So we're kind of testing everything right now to see how fast we can push it. Meanwhile, Dad's about out of fuel in the combine and he, he, he's called me twice now. He's getting real nervous. Which means I'm going to hook up to old Thunder here and go top him off. Thunder! Or you just pull up when you get to the end here wherever you want to and I'll pull the trailer up next to the ladder. Thunder, you're a lifesaver. And as long as we're sitting here and we got the capabilities, we're gonna fill up the def as well. Scratch that. Uh, Dad's running into the yard because something something is wrong with thunder. It's not pumping any fuel. So the the um, the basic mechanism that is supposed to mechanize is not mechanizationing. I'll get a hold of Nessa or Thunder Creek on that, but apparently the pump is not pumping. He's all fueled up and ready to go, and the grain dryer's running correctly. That means I can finally maybe go start on cleaning up this strip tail cart. Alan's back with his first truck since refueling. Now that the dryer's running really well, I'm gonna take a couple samples just to see where this corn is coming out of the field at. 17 and a half. Unbelievable, but this is early corn and it's on dry ground, so chances are this is going to be our driest corn all fall, but 17 and a half. That is dang near unheard of for us around here. <sighs> that probably didn't seem too difficult to you guys, but that's a hour and a half, two hour long crappy job. I'm glad it's over. We'll test this next truck that came in and see where we're at. It's still dry and we're still pushing it out the dryer quickly. You want a ride, huh, Didge? All right, I'll give you a quick one. She loves this thing as much as Anna now. Anna must be taking a nap in the garage. I'm gonna find somewhere handy to unhook that strip tiller so that I can put this chisel plow on that tractor. Oh, look, there's a spot. Oh, you heard us leave, huh? You missed your chance. Ah, this poor dog. Snooze you lose, Anna, I'm sorry. According to the weatherman, this might be the last little bit of sun and beautiful weather we've got for the fall. It's all downhill from here. Even the next two weeks, though, are supposed to be like highs in the mid 50s or low 50s. So, well, 40s tomorrow, but that's not bad. From middle of October, it's to be expected. It still looks like, other than a little colder, it's not gonna be too bad. Look at that, okay. Now I'm gonna pull it up and pull some of these extra monitors out and clean the cab a little bit, put some diesel in it. Maybe I'll pull it up to diesel barrel first. These RTs, when you go up a little hill, they sure feel like a big hill. That probably only made sense to people who have driven the RTs before, or a two-track anything. This way I can get fuel going, get the monitors out, keep an eye on the dryer. I can do everything at once. Multitasking. Fueling up a tractor has never been cheap, but I believe this tractor holds about 400 gallons. You do the math on that. Oh boy. Oh, what do we do with this rat's nest? One thing at a time, if we can. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh boy. Oh geez, we'll sort through this later. There we go. I sorted through it and separated them. It wasn't that bad. It was pretty bad, but I got it. Couple of these. Might have to turn the lights on out here pretty soon. All 
right, here's my chance for the the daily guess on the music. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mouth the words of this song. You guess what you think it is. Let me know what you guys think. Again, it's unfortunate, but you know, copyright laws don't let me include the music. Let's go see how I did. Oh. <laughs> Dang, I'm good. Did sure has been hanging out with me a lot today. And honest, just, I don't know where she's at. Kids are obviously home now, so she's probably hanging around up at the house. Simple tillage without any Thing over complicated, just turning the dirt. Five to four. Go ahead. I've got the chisel plow running. Everything should be good here. It's all fueled up and ready to go. Um, and I just talked to Luke down at Nessa about the Thunder Creek trailer, and he he told me to fill it up a little more full, get it above the pump, and then there's a like a a vent or bleeder cap on top of the pump. He said open that and see if for some reason it might have lost its prime. If that doesn't do it, they'll get a pump sent up here right away. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds good. I don't know if you want to work on that tonight or in the morning. Either one's fine. How much do you guys have left out there before you finish what you're trying to finish tonight? I think about three and a half rounds. Yeah, if you wanted to switch with Alan, you sure could. And then we can work on that in the morning. We need to change fuel filters in the 8320 in the morning, too. Yeah, I think so. We may as well. That's what it sounds like. Then we'll put points on it in the morning. That. I looked at. I think. I think those are good for another day. But this one probably needs them right away tomorrow. The points on the chisel plow are getting plenty wore out. So we're gonna put new points or sweeps or whatever you want to call them on in the morning. And it's supposed to be below 30 degrees in the morning. They're talking upper 20s, so I'm gonna back it in right now. That way it'll be a lot nicer to work on. Yeah, I don't think so either. We're gonna have to... Well, I can't even get all the way in with the Moline there. We'll move that first. I don't know if I'm in yet. Took a little work, but we got it. Yeah, I guess so. Didge, if you had thumbs, I'd just have you do this overnight. Time for me to take over the truck for an hour. Go see how they're doing out there. There's a lot of lightning happening out there to the east. You can pick off me. Off he goes, off I go. Man, it has become crazy windy out in the last hour. The corn leaves are blowing everywhere. A little bit wetter, but that is still fantastic. Between that and good weather, it makes all the difference for a harvest. Check the uh, level in the wet bin here. Ooh, there's a good amount of corn in there. We've been moving it out fast with the dryer. But they've been bringing it in quick with the combine too. Well, I think I'm gonna continue with these guys until we're done with those rounds, probably about another 30 minutes or so only. So I'm gonna call it a night here on the YouTube channel. Wanna thank you guys for watching. Uh, what else? Only, uh, only like 60% of you actually subscribe to the channel, so that's disappointing. That means 4 out of 10 of you could hit the subscribe button, but you haven't. I don't send you any emails, it doesn't cost you anything, you just hit the little red subscribe thing. But if you don't want to, I get it. Whatever. Hey, thanks for watching either way. Keep it between the rows.